Hi everyone! Welcome to week five of our English 3010 online course. We are in the second week of project two. Hopefully everybody has thawed out and are ready to tackle some more genre analysis. We are going to talk in this video about the week's activities. We're going to talk a little bit about the project builders and homework that you need to do and end talking a bit about rhetor or genre analysis as a whole. I almost said rhetorical analysis and if you have taken English 1020 here at Wayne State, you're familiar with that term. And if you are familiar with rhetorical analysis, this is a great project for you because genre analysis and rhetorical analysis are really closely intertwined and you'll use the skills that you have employed in rhetorical analysis as you're looking at a genre of writing and doing genre analysis. But we'll get to that in a minute. First, I'm going to open up our Canvas site and we'll talk through the week's activities. Okay, so this week we are going to be practicing more genre analysis. You guys, by this point, have chosen your two peer-reviewed journal articles. If not, you're finalizing that choice. Uh, so many of you have already talked about the writing studies article that you chose from last week's reader response. This week, you want to finalize the choice of article from your discourse community and start to do the work of comparing and contrasting those two articles. But more on that in a second. This week's assignments include watching the week five video, which you're already doing, air five. Couple of things to read this week, just chapter six of the Wadsworth Guide. And in the resources folder in our Canvas homepage, you can find some sample student text for Project 2. Now, I want to pause here to say that any sample student text I include is necessarily going to be slightly flawed because no piece of writing is perfect, and I don't choose these samples to give you a line-by-line -line or word-by-word -word template. Really, more I choose these samples so that you guys can see what a genre analysis looks like. You can see what good students are identifying. You can see what good students are transitioning into and out of. But also, you can see where even good students haven't fully developed ideas or perhaps didn't catch some things in their editing and proofreading. Um, so take both of those things as lessons, not as templates, but as lessons that will help you write your genre analysis. Okay? All right. And then the writing that's due this week, just two things. Writing a summary of each one of your chosen articles. So it's two summaries, 200 to 300 words each, capturing the key arguments and evidence in both articles that you're comparing and contrasting. And then we start to get more into the analysis. Remember we talked last week about how genre analysis isn't just what the piece is saying. Because let's face it guys, a writing studies article is not going to say the same thing as a pharmaceutical article or an education psychology article. <clears throat> Their content is obviously going to be wildly different, but we're also looking at how they present their content. What does the thesis statement look like? Is there a recognizable thesis statement? What do the intro paragraphs look like? What do the lit reviews look like? How do each discipline, how does each discipline present their evidence? Uh, what's the role of visuals? What are the role of subheadings? These are things that we get into with genre analysis that help us see how the content is presented. Okay, so if we look at our calendar, we can see that for this week, 
watch the week five video. You want to try to get that reading under your belt by tomorrow-ish so that you can also be returning to those articles or reading them for the first time so you can write up your summary by Friday and get these genre analysis questions situated. Now, I did want to talk to you guys for a minute about the guidelines for analyzing genres. So this is a PDF that is embedded in the PB6 assignment. These are the questions I want you to answer, or rather the prompts I want you to address. In the assignment, I call it a heuristic, which is a word we've talked about before. It's a piece of Lexis from my discourse community of comp studies. And it means a series of questions to help you think through an issue or a problem. So what we have here, guidelines for analyzing genres. Step one, gather samples. You guys have that. You have your article from your discourse community. You have one of my articles that I've given you from my discourse community. Now, step two, identify the scene and situation in which the genre is used. So this can be tricky because we don't always use these particular bits of Lexis. Really here we're, we're wanting to look at the rhetorical situation of the genre. So when it says here, setting, where does the genre appear? I'm not going to highlight that because it kind of blacks it out. But where does the genre appear? How and when it is, is it transmitted and used? With what other genres does it interact these are questions of publication and readership and circulation. Where does the genre appear includes places like, well, it appears in the Journal of Writing Studies. It appears online through the JSTOR database. It appears wherever else it appears, in the library, in a printed packet, wherever you encounter it, okay? How and when is it transmitted and used? So that's circulated in the published journal, found online via databases. These are all the places that a peer-reviewed journal article would be found and used. If it was a different genre, we'd be talking about something different. For example, uh, what about a pamphlet in a doctor's office? cross-reference that or com contrast that with a pamphlet in the student center telling you when a karaoke night is. There are two different locations, settings where they're used, where, how and when is it transmitted. One gets handed to you from somebody working in the student center. The other is sitting in the little plastic tray at the doctor's office. Okay, so this is the, what we're getting at with this question of setting. Subject. So this is topics, ideas, what are the main themes of the genre? It's more about the content. And then we have participants who uses the genre. So who's reading it, who's writing it, etc. Participants, this kind of connects here with these subpoints, writers and readers. Participants are the writers and readers who writes the text, are multiple writers possible? Sometimes peer-reviewed journal articles are written by six or seven people. Sometimes they're written by one or two. Who reads this text? Once again, these are the people that participate in the genre. Next, you want to move on to talk about the purposes. So this really gets into the rhetorical situation in terms of the purpose or message or why is this piece written? Why is this genre here? To communicate XYZ, right, the subjects, but why? What for? To create new knowledge in a field? To convince someone to come to karaoke night? What is the purpose of the genre? Why do people read it? Now, this second step, the setting, the subject, the participants, and the purposes, we're getting kind of the broad rhetorical situation of a genre. Then you're going to move on to really a little bit more micro features. We did the macro features. Now we want to zoom in and look at really specific what we call conventions of a genre, including content in terms of what kind of evidence, what counts as evidence, the structure, the organization, 
format? Are there subheadings? Are there big paragraphs? Are there graphs used that gets into evidence what's included or excluded? What are the sentences like? Are they very complicated, dense sentences? Are they more simple sentences? Now, here's really important stuff. In these last two bullet points, when we get into sentences and diction, you want to be looking at not just if it's complicated or simple, because they might all seem relatively complicated, but you also want to look at are there personal pronouns being used? Is it active voice or passive voice? And why? Why would one discourse community privilege passive voice and one discourse community privilege active voice? These are the questions that I want you to be addressing in your final genre analysis essay. So I'm having you just kind of go through them in a super quick bullet point format here in your homework so that you can get all these ideas down. Then you can draw from this project builder as you're putting together your final essay for project two. Okay, I think that does it for our instruction here in this video. I'm going to pull it back and give us some final thoughts. Okay, so what we want to take away from the video today is that this week is all about analysis of your chosen articles. This is not about comprehension of what the text says as much as it is on top of that understanding how the text is communicating that content. Um, so if you have questions about this, please feel free to shoot me an email as you're working through both of these project builders. They're both intended to help you navigate the articles, but also to separate out, right? PB5 is a lot, largely about content. PB6 gets you into these genre analysis questions. You'll use them both to build your final genre analysis. Okay. Well, I hope everyone's having a great day. Uh, of course, hit up Rayanne on GroupMe. Please take note of her office hours. So if there are things that you guys want to chat with Rayanne about, since she's already taken this class and has been a peer mentor for this class before, feel free to ask her. Um, yeah, shoot me an email. We can set up a Skype. Uh, you're welcome to visit me during office hours in my office. Other than that... Happy analysis, everybody. Have a great week. Bye-bye.